Hello everyone. In this video, I'm gonna do what I promised you to do quite a bit time ago, and that is adaptive control of robots in the joint space. So far, we have seen applying adaptive control to first order systems, linear and nonlinear, and then higher order systems with full state feedback. Now it's time to look at a higher order system that is nonlinear with specific applications and that is a robot. So if you remember the equations of motion for a robot if you neglect the frictions and actuator dynamics in general can be given by dq double dot plus c of q and q dot times q dot plus gq equals tau. Okay so the question is what would you do to control the system if you do the feedback linearization or inverse dynamics, um, one way is the torque can be considered as uh, D times some desired acceleration plus CQR dot plus CQ dot plus G. And the reason you add this C and G is in theory they cancel that C and G, okay, if you know the system parameters well. And you can add a PD control as well here to drive the system error to zero. The one that you have seen I have done in uh, one of my previous videos, if you remember, the tau in that is equal to D times some desired acceleration, which we call AQ plus C times Q dot plus uh, G. And this desired acceleration, if you remember it, it was basically QD double dot plus uh, KP times E plus uh, KD times E dot. And uh, E, the way we defined it back then, was defined as Q desired minus Q, which is the same here. And... Um, so this was the PD plus fit forward, and that thing I called AQ. Okay, acceleration desired Q. And uh, this is what I use now. Here we use a slightly different version, and this one is also capable of achieving zero tracking error if and only if we know the parameters in D, C, and G perfectly well. So what is it that we are using here? Here, that PD portion is not multiplied by D, it's outside. And then uh, the C matrix is not multiplied by Q dot, it's multiplied by this new thing, QR dot. Also, D is not multiplied by QD double dot, it's multiplied by QR double dot. So the first thing is, what is this QR dot and QR double dot, which we kind of, we uh, call them reference or combined velocity and reference or combined acceleration. What are these? Here, the definition of error is the same as before, QD minus Q. I know many books define it as Q minus QD. It's fine. And if that's the case, then you need to change these signs to negative and negative instead of positive and positive KPE and KDE dot. They will be negative terms. But that's fine. Uh, what is this QR dot, this combined velocity? So this is QR dot is QD dot plus KP times E. And so QR double dot is, of course, QD double dot plus KP times E dot because you take a time derivative. Okay. Now, what is it? Why do we need to add something to QD dot or QD double dot? You see, last time we used this. But now we are adding something to him. What is it that we are doing here? Why do we add the error term, which is of type position, to the velocity here, right? Because we are combining position and velocity literally here. So what is it that we are doing? Why do we do it the way it is? Let's talk about this portion here. So the reason for this can be justified by if you have two cars or two masses, and one is trying to capture the other one, right? So let's say you have this car, and this car has a position, and uh, you call it X, or in this case Q, and it wants to basically catch up with this desired car, which is in blue, 
and this car shows your desired position which is shown by QD okay Q and QD are not equal but they are both moving with the same velocity so this one is moving Q dot this one is moving QD dot okay but there is a difference between them this offset here is basically that E that you have so you are moving at the same speed so Q dot and Q D dot are the same you are moving with the same speed but at a distance so if this red one wants to catch up with the blue one, what is the only solution? The only solution is the red one has to move a little bit faster than the blue one so it can catch up with it. So drive this E to zero because remember the ultimate goal of control is to drive the tracking error to zero. So if I want to get rid of this tracking error that is due to one object lagging behind the object, other object is... To make Q dot bigger than Q D dot, and for that we need to add something to it. What the whatever we have to add to it should be proportional to this error. So if this, because this error is the distance between the two, so if the distance is very small, you just need to uh, make the red one go a little bit faster than the blue one. But if the error is very large, the distance between them is very large. You need to make it what you need to make the red one go quite a bit faster than the blue one. So we need this to be proportional to E, and that proportionality constant, we call it Kp here. So you see, we add this extra thing here. So ultimately, Q dot is a little bit bigger than Qd dot, and that forces the error to converge to zero. So the reason we use this combined velocity is so the system can catch up with its desired what position, okay, which is what we want. Okay, so that's the reason for that, and now uh can we get the system to go to zero right so if i go ahead and uh, use all the equations one to five so one is the equation of motion for system two is the uh, torque that you use from the controller and in this torque we need qr dot and qr double dot which i find them from three and four and also we need E, which is from 5. So if I combine 1 to 5 all equations, this is going to be your uh, resulting equation of motion. Here, if you factor out the uh, D between these two, so basically take this to the other side, becomes D times QR double dot minus Q uh, double dot. And then uh, you have a, a C, there is a q dot and qr dot so again this term also you take to the other side and subtract and uh, there is kd times e dot plus kp dot so that guy is this one here so now on the right hand side we simplify what is the difference between qr double dot and q double dot well if you look that is qr double dot so if i subtract the q double dot from it right it is going to be qd double dot minus q double dot which is e double dot plus kpe dot so that's this one which is pre-multiplied by d similarly if i subtract qr dot minus q dot then uh basically i have e dot here plus kpe which is pre-multiplied by c and then plus kt times e dot plus kpe and uh, if you factor it out in terms of E double dot, E dot, and E, this is going to be your error dynamics equations. So now the question is, can you get a zero tracking error? Does this equation mean that E is going to zero? And the answer is not necessarily for every kind of QD. Why? Because these coefficient matrices of E double dot, E dot, and E, they are not necessarily constant things. Unless KP and KD are very large that they dominate the variable terms. So we can say that mostly it is about almost a, a linear ODE with constant coefficients. And then you can pick KB and KD so that they go to zero. The roots are on the negative side of the uh, imaginary axis. Other than that, really, you cannot do it. And you know, big KP and KD gains means big control signals, which they have saturation limits. So it's not really feasible in real world. 
So that does not guarantee error convergence for all scenarios. And uh, in regularization, where this QD is constant and all the dots, QD dot, double dot, and then Q dot and Q double dot are all zero, so C goes to zero too, then uh, you have a chance this major variable term C is not there and D really is the inertia matrix, okay, which is positive definite and symmetric. So there is a chance of convergence for regularization in simulations. But for a variable uh, D, it's not necessarily possible. Now to show you that here, we're going to apply this control law to the 2DOF uh, planar robot with both rotary joints where the length of the members and the mass of the members are given and we assume they are slender bars and the desired q1 and q2 are 10 and 8 radians we start from all zero initial conditions and for kp and kd we pick 4 4 and 1 1 diagonal and you can see that if you use this control law actually you are capable of what achieving zero tracking error for both q1 and q2 but this is what this is when this was constant and we predicted that it can happen and this was assuming that we know these parameters a1 a2 m1 and m2 perfectly okay what if you don't what if you still want to do regularization but you don't know these parameters as accurate as uh, you have them in the robot. You have, you know them, you could measure them with some small deviation. Could you still achieve zero tracking error? The answer is no. This is going to fail. And not only this uh, new control is going to fail. The previous one, remember that I showed you with that AQ, that is also going to fail. It doesn't matter what control you used whether it was computed torque or it was a multi um, basically variable centralized control or whatever it was inverse dynamics or you might call it feedback linearization they are all valid as long as you know the parameters well in d c and g okay when you don't know them look here so here instead of 0.2 for a1 i have 0.24 for A2, instead of 0.12, I use 0.10, and M1 instead of 0 0.4, 0 0.45, and this one instead of 0 0.2, 0 0.25, okay? So these are the actual parameter values, and you see that I'm not necessarily largely off from these numbers. If I redo that control with these and with the same desired values, same initial conditions, you see that Q1 error and Q2 error would not settle at zero. Actually, one of them settles at about 0.04 radians. One is at about 0.01 radians. And so you cannot achieve a zero tracking error. Okay, it's not possible. You might say, well, can you add some I here to this uh, PD? Can you add some I and I did that I as well and still cannot achieve perfect zero tracking error, okay? Because my knowledge of these parameters is not good. So what we need is adaptive control. We need to be able to see if we can estimate these parameters, okay? And uh, also drive the tracking error to zero. So uh, here, instead of the torque, being uh, that dqr double dot plus cqr dot plus g plus kd times the uh, e dot plus kpe for that d c and g i use d hat c hat and g hat because i only have estimates of these right then one thing that we need to do remember i showed you in one of my previous videos that the equations of motion for a robot are linear in terms of parameters so this left hand side of the equation which is equal to tau this left hand side you can write it as y of q q dot and q double dot this time variable term times this vector theta which is the vector of all of the parameters of the system so you can write your equation in what? In this linear manner, 
Now, what is it for any robot? You can find it for the two DOF robots that I just mentioned above. I'm going to show you what is Y and what is theta. But for any robot, the equations of motion can be written in terms of Y times what? Uh, theta. And what's the name for theta? Theta is called the parameter vector. And this Y has a name, this time variable term. This is what we call the regressor, if you remember, right? So Y is, uh, <laughs> yeah, seems like there is something here. This is called the regressor. <laughs> it doesn't call Y. <laughs> okay, sorry for that. It is called the regressor vector or matrix. And um, what are they? Again, I'm going to show you. So if that's the case, then the tau that we use for controller is going to be Y times theta hat because Y has nothing to do with parameters. Theta hat does. So instead of actual theta of the robot, we only know their estimates. So it's going to be Y times theta hat plus what? Plus a uh, PD control. Okay, yes. So Y theta hat plus a PD control is going to be my control law, right? Yeah, because this whole term is now replaced by Y hat times uh, Y times theta hat and plus the PD. That is the same as what I had above. Remember the control law that we have? That's the exact same thing. So... What is the difference here? As I said, one is theta is theta hat. The other one is, since in the control law, not only I have Q and Q dot, I also have QR dot and QR double dot. So instead of my Y being only a function of Q, Q dot and Q double dot, my Y is going to be a function of Q, Q dot, qr dot and qr double dot so we need to extract this y okay we need to extract this y in order to be able to apply our control law and of course the thetas that we have in the system and you might say aren't uh, the elements in this theta just a1 a2 m1 and m2 and the answer is no okay i'll show you what they are okay so you know what let's go ahead and see that the 2df uh, planner are our robot right now okay that's a good time to show it before we move on so here these are the equations of motion for the uh, robots that we just studied and d11 d12 and d22 are the elements of the d matrix that are given here the crystal symbols uh, with three subscripts there are eight of them that they are given in the on the right hand side as you can see and they go to the c matrix and this phi one and phi two or in my previous notations you might have seen g1 and g2 the gravity terms are also given here as well okay so now how do we pick our parameters and how do we pick the terms in y so we go and we need to rewrite these D's, C's, and Phi's in terms of the elements of theta. How do we do it? We go one by one, starting from D11. If we see any constant term anywhere, okay, whether it's alone or multiplied by a time variable term, we give it a new name. For instance, if you look at this whole thing, there is a portion that is entirely constant, and that is this plus this M2 times that plus this portion. All of these are constant terms, so we just add them together and call these three terms constant added together. I call it theta 1, as you can see. The re remaining term is this M2 times uh, 2L1, L2 cosine Q2. So we don't need that two part, but the M2, L1, LC2, which is multiplied by cosine Q2, that portion also, I would call it what? I would call that portion a new constant. So this one is going to be called theta 2, as you can see. So clearly now D11 can be uh, written as theta 1 plus 2 theta 2 cosine Q2. Then I come to D12 or 21, which are the same thing. 
and I say, look, here I have this constant term, m2lc2 squared plus i2, that's the constant of this. So I give it a new name, call it theta3, and then the variable term in it is what? It is this m2 times uh, l1 lc2, which is the same as above. So that's the same theta2. So d11 or 212 uh, or 21, they can be what? Theta3 plus theta2 cosine of q2. Then we look at uh, d22. Uh, that is this constant, and this constant is already the one we used in the top one. That is this theta3, so I can say d22 is entirely theta3. So here, the d's are taken care of. Now we go to the uh, phi's. If you look at the phi's, again, find the constant term and the variable, the coefficients of variable term. Now here, all the constants are multiplied by the variable term. So all of this and this one, we have to consider. Now this mlc1 plus m2l1, we give it a new name. We call it theta4. And the other term, m2lc2, which we have not used so far, call it theta5. Now, G is not considered a part of theta. Why? Because thetas, if you look at all the thetas we have defined so far, they are coming from the geometry and the mass of the members. G is gravity. It has nothing to do with the robot. So we take this G and consider it a part of the Y instead of what? Instead of the theta, because we are not going to estimate this G. So that portion, we call it theta 4. This portion, we call theta 5. So phi 1 is going to be theta 4 g cosine q1 plus theta 5 g cosine of q1 plus q2. And similarly, since I have this term already above defined, so phi 2 is going to be theta 5 g cosine q1 plus q2. And if you look at the c's, the only thing in the c's, they are all either h or negative h, and h is just m2 l1 lc2 sine q2. And this m2 l1 lc2 is already theta 2. So I can say all of the C's are either negative theta 2 or positive theta 2 times what? Times sine of Q2, as you can see. So you see, all we needed were five terms, and they are entirely alone constants or the constants coefficient of the variable terms. As many as we can find so that we can define all of the D's, C's, and phi's in terms of these thetas, we use them. You see here, we need five of them. So theta 1 to theta 5, everything is now formulated. So if theta vector is all of these thetas, which is this, now question is, what is y? First, we're going to find y of q, q dot, and q double dot, and then we modify it to the one that we need. How do we do this part? Well, now we look at the equations, and we find these uh, theta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coefficients, and the coefficients will go into the rows. For instance, if I uh, bring in the top equation, let's write it down. It's D21. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. It's D21 Q1 double dot plus D22 Q2 double dot, right? plus C112 Q1 double uh, Q1 dot squared plus phi 2 right this is what we need to write as tau 1 so we are focusing on the left hand side and remember that your phi 2 1 is what theta 3 plus theta 2 times cosine of q2 d22 is simply just theta 3 c112 is theta 2 sine of q2 and phi 2 as you can see is theta 5 times g times cosine of summation of the angles so now look here if you look at this left hand side Find the coefficients of theta 1 all the way to theta 5, and they are going to sit in the 5 positions of the bottom row. So how many theta 1s do you see here in all of this left-hand side? There is no theta 1, so that is 0. Similarly, if you look, there is no theta 4 anywhere. It's just 2, 3, and 5. So theta 4 coefficient is also 0. 
Now, what's the coefficient of theta 5? The only place you have theta 5 is here, and the coefficient of that is this g cosine of the two angles added, so that is going to sit at theta 5. Where do you see theta 2? Theta 2 has this coefficient, right? Look at it. It's sine q2 times q1 dot squared, and it is also here. It is cosine q2 times q1 double dot. So those two terms are going to be the coefficient of what? Theta 2, which you can see here. What is the coefficient of theta 3? Well, if you look, it's just q2 double dot plus, of course, what? Plus, of course, uh, you can see that it is multiplied by q1 double dot. So it's going to be q1 double dot plus q2 double dot. That's how you find this bottom row. And similarly, if you expand the first row, the left-hand side of the first row, and you replace all these dcs and phis in terms of these thetas, which are these, basically, uh, then, again, find the coefficients of theta 1 to theta 5. They're going to fill the first row for you. So that is how you find what? The y. And so now you can write the left-hand side of both of these equations as y times what times theta okay and you can see that the dimension work if you look at the dimension of y what is the dimension it is 2 by 5 and the dimension of theta is 5 by 1 so if you multiply y by theta you get a 2 by 1 and 2 by 1 is the dimension of the right hand side okay so you can write it as y times theta this is wrong this should be actually y times theta not theta times y Okay, so you can write it as y times theta. Now the question is, remember what we need is not just y, it's y of q, q dot, qr dot, and qr double dot. So we need to modify the y here in order to be able to what? In order to be able to plug it into the control law number eight. So how do we do that? Well, here we see where is it that QR dot and double dot are sitting. And if you look at here, the place that you had Q double dot is replaced by QR double dot. So any Q double dot you see in Y, it has to be replaced by QR double dot. What about the Q dot? If, is every Q dot going to be replaced by QR dot? No. If you look, this is more complicated. The Q dots that were inside the C matrix, they are not going to be replaced, but the right-hand side, when it's mul well, C is multiplied by the vector Q dot, now that outside Q dot is replacing by QR dot. So your C matrix is not going to be replaced, but when it multiplied by QR dot, it is, and that makes us to change what? To change that y to this y, and if you'll see, wherever we had the double dots, look at them. Wherever we had a double dot, now they're all replaced by double dot, but the r term. But for q, for c, q, q dot, if you look, this guy, look at this one. Uh, I want you to pay attention to this. And this. This one was negative q dot uh, 2 squared. Okay. And then uh, negative 2 q1 dot q2 dot. So this uh, negative q2 dot squared is now replaced by which term? Replaced by this q2 dot times qr uh, q2r dot qr2 dot. That is replaced by that. And then this 2q1 dot q2 dot, it is broken into two parts, like this. And then in each one of them, one of them is q dot, one of them is qr dot. So that is replaced by this one here and this one. Uh, sorry, this one. You see that? Or look at this q1 dot squared, that is replaced by q1 dot qr1 dot. So this is your y that you need, and that is your theta that you need. Good? Okay, so now that we got this uh, decomposition and we wrote it in a linear manner, now we should be able to use this control torque 
The only thing we have not talked about so far is the adaptation law. How would you change this theta hat? And here we suggest this theta hat formula, theta hat dot equals k theta hat inverse, where k theta is a matrix that is symmetric, positive, definite. So it's the inverse of that times y hat times what? Times the PD control, which is not... There is no D gain in it. And by the way, this guy, we can give it a name. And uh, if you look at my reference here, which is the book by Siciliano, it's also a very good book. Quite a bit heavy to understand all of it, but it's a very good book. Robot Modeling, Planning, and Control by Siciliano et al. If you see that book, you see that this E dot plus KPE, they gave it a notation and they call it sigma. So if you see sigma, don't think it's really a, a special thing. So it's basically K theta, the gain matrix, inverse. This, is, this acts similar to that gamma that we had all the time. But instead of all the other terms, here is the Y and this is the sigma. So it is written like this. Okay, basically gamma inverse y transpose times sigma. And how would you know that the system with that control law in 8 and this adaptation law in 9 is going to work? Again, we have to use Lyapunov stability and the Lyapunov function we choose is this guy. One half, one half sigma transpose d sigma plus a transpose kp kde plus one half theta tilde transpose k theta theta tilde. And of course, theta tilde, based on the definition that we know, is what is theta tilde. Remember what we had for the definition of tilde in the past, right? I don't think I have it up here, so I have to write it down there, I assume, okay? Yeah, seems like I don't have it here. But the uh, theta tilde, the definition of that is basically theta hat minus the actual theta. So again, if you look at it, it is comprised of error terms. So this is the error in estimation parameter, estimation of parameters. This is a direct error because of that. Um, um, uh, this is the direct tracking error, and this is the uh, combined tracking error. So we want all of them. Because if sigma doesn't go to zero and E and theta tilde go to zero, that doesn't mean necessarily E dot also goes to zero. And we want E dot to go to zero too, so E doesn't change. And mathematically, you can show that if you take time derivative of this, and here you need to find sigma uh, dot, and you need to find E dot, and you need to find theta tilde dot. And you know theta tilde dot is the same as theta hat dot. And for E dot and for sigma dot, we can use the relations that we have, right? Sigma dot is no big deal. It's just going to be E double dot plus KPE dot. If you plug in and simplify and you can do it as a practice, you can show that while the V function was positive, V dot function is going to be entirely negative. So the um, uh, basically convergence is guaranteed. Okay, so we're going to use laws 7 and 8. And note that these 7 and 8 are applicable to any robot. They are not just for the 2D OF. The only thing you need to do if it's a different robot is to find what? Is to find theta and is to find y, or in this case, y uh, with modified q and qr. So if you find this theta vector and if you find this or find y and then modify to this, once you write it in this linear format, you can write equation 7 and 8 for any, uh, sorry, 8 and 9 for any robot, not just specifically this one. Now, I'm going to show you a demo of this one in Simulink, but know that it can be applied to any robot. So, here, um, this is uh, your error. You can see that Q1 error and Q2 error in this robot do converge to zero over time. And uh, let me show you that. So uh, before I jump on to the adaptive control, I want to show you this inverse dynamics that we had. Remember, we said that we pick uh, basically um, here. We pick equation 2 for my control. And it is going to work if we know everything well. So in this first file that I'm going to share with you, 
The parameters that are used in this inverse dynamics controller are the exact same thing as the robot. So if in the robot I have A1, A2, M1, and M2 exactly as those numbers I told you, look here. And by the way, I's are coming from the slender bar assumption. Now, if I go into my controller, again, you see I'm using exactly those. And if I do so, and if you uh, look at my tau's, they are coming exactly from the formula I showed you, d times qr double dot plus c times qr dot plus g plus kd times e dot plus kp, where uh, basically I need to find q1, q2, q1 dot, q2 dot, qd dot, Q, uh, qd, qd dot, and qd double dot. Why do I need them? Because I need to form the error term. I need to form the error dot term. Uh, and here I use this KP and KD. I need to then form my QR dot and QR double dot. And look for QR double dot. I need QD double dot. Okay. So that's why we also need QD double dot. Not only we need QD and it's dot, we need it's double dot too. And then once we have these uh, combined velocity accelerations, we can form our torque and pass it to the system. And look, here my desires, as you can see, uh, they are 10 and 8, and their first and second derivatives are 0 because they are constant. If I run this, you clearly see that the system is going to work. On the other hand, if I change the parameters in the controller a little bit different from the robot, you see that it is not going to convert. So let me show you these results before we go and look at the um, uh, adaptive controller. Okay, this is the first one, Q1. You can see it's easily converging to its final value of 10. Okay, and if you click on Q2, it should be converging to its desired value of 8. You see, it is perfectly working. If you want, you can get the errors and plot the errors as well. And as I told you, the errors uh, clearly are going to go to zero. Yes. Now, uh, on the other hand, as I said, if I go into this controller and choose the second set of parameters, which are off from the actual ones by some percentage, you can see that the system is not going to be capable of what of uh, basically driving the tracking error to zero. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here we go. And you might say, oh, look, it is converging to 10. <laughs> well, kind of. If you zoom in, you'll find that it's not perfectly converging to 10. There we go. Now you can see it. You see it's between 9.9 .9 and 10. So you have some 0.04, 0.05 error. And if you look at the other one too, that's even harder to see because you see, oh, look, it's perfectly 8. Again, you have to zoom in. And if you zoom in again, you can see that it is about uh, 0.01 or so. Okay, so clearly, and it is settled, so it is not going to get any closer. So it's absolutely what, uh, not exactly converging. And you might say, well, you did not zoom into the previous one, huh? What if the previous one you zoomed in and you did have error? Yes. Could you show me that if you zoom in, there was actually no error? And I say, yes, absolutely. You are totally entitled to that question. And here we go. Look here. Look at this. Here, this is already zoomed in, right? This is zoom out. This is zoom in. Let's go back, zoom in. Look at that. Here, further. It's exactly at 10. And look at this one. Again, first I zoom out so you can see. Then I zoom back in. Let's see. Here. You see that? Perfectly at 8. So you see, by changing these parameters a little bit, I could not converge. And if I make these estimates even further off, I'm going to get bigger errors. Okay? So that's why we need adaptive control. And uh, if you run this file, this file is going to give you the errors. So here, this is the companion M file. If you want, it is going to plot the errors for you, as I said. And you can see that the errors do converge to what? To perfect zero in this case. The other one, they don't. 
So uh, now let's look at the adaptive one, which also has a companion file. And uh, this is the simulink for it. So let me show you the simulink. This is the simulink. And of course, simulink needs an adaptive uh, parameter estimation, which has a function to calculate theta hat dot for you. Based on the rule, remember it was inverse of the K matrix times Y hat times that sigma. Okay, so inside this, you need to form the Y, which Y? The Y that has QR dot and QR double dot in it. And you see clearly, I need not only Qs and Q dots, I also need QDs and its derivatives so I can form the QR dot and QR double dot. So I can find my theta hat and then I integrate my theta hat to get my uh, theta hat dot to get theta hat and then I use that theta hat in my inverse control dynamics. So as you can see, y is multiplied by theta hat plus that PD control term. That is your torque. And uh, if you look, the parameters that I have are not going to be the same as what? The same as the physical system. So here, these are my uh, A's, M's, and I's. Okay. These are the accurate ones. And uh, here, I'm going to calculate for you the theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, and theta 5. These are what the system should ideally converge to. Yes? These are the perfect ones. And uh, then, here, uh, I'm going to not only plot for you the convergence of tracking error, but I'm going to also plot for you what? The theta hat of the system. So you see, I'm also able to monitor the theta hats and send them to workspace to see the results. And uh, here is the set of thing I have. Again, 10, 8, 0, 0, everything. And I'm going to what? I'm going to uh, run this again. So let's go ahead and run the um, script, the test script here. And we'll see whether the tracking error goes to zero and whether the parameters will converge to their actual values or not, if my desires are constant. So first, let's look at the tracking errors. Clearly, you see that both tracking errors are at zero. And you might say, hey, zoom in. I don't believe that. Zoom in for me, right? And I say you are entitled to that question. Look here. Both of them are what? Perfectly at zero. Okay, so adaptive control is doing its job. Now, uh, what are the actual thetas that I need to have? If you look at them, these are these numbers, 0 0 0.0188, 0 0.0188, 0 0.0036, 0 0.0014, 0 0.1, and 0 0.018, right? These are my five thetas with these parameters. Now, what do I get them to converge to here? If you look here, and these are those actual numbers, you can see that theta one hat is clearly not converging to that small number, 0 0.01 or 0 0.02. It's converging to somewhere close to one. Theta two hat, which is the red one, is negative. And clearly, that's different from this. Theta 3 hat, green, if you look at it, uh, theta 3 hat is a very small number, about uh, 1 over 1,000. And clearly, this is not 1 over 1,000. Okay, and clearly, this is negative as well. So clearly, theta 3 hat is not converging. Theta 4 hat should be converging to point 0.1, is it? Just move your cursor on it and... It should give you a point somewhere. See if I can get any point. There we go. And if you look at it, that's point one, and this is point one. So your theta four does actually converge. What about theta five? It should be point zero one eight. Let's click on that, and you see that's point zero one eight. So two out of the five thetas are converging. Three of them are not converging. And you might say, what was your initial guess for these thetas when you used that integrator block here? What did you use? Guess what? Look here, all zeros. 
So initially, I had no idea what my uh, parameters are. And I knew they were small, but how much, I don't know. So I used five zeros, but my system were smart enough to converge at least two of them to the actual ones, three of them, not exactly. And it was enough to converge my uh, tracking error to zero, which is the most important thing that I care about. And you might say, well, how can I get all five of them to converge? Remember, the technique was what? to modify this Q desired to a time variable signal that has enough harmonics in it to be persistently what? Exciting. So that is your job here to use some persistently exciting signal for Q D's D dot and D double dot and have enough harmonics. This one only has one. And this, I leave it for you as a practice to basically uh, replace that block with this one and see if you can get to converge all five parameters to their actual values. Just giving you one warning <laughs> before uh, you exchange these blocks and try to see if it can be uh, persistently exciting or not. Just giving you a warning and that is going back to where we started which we said, remember that the error dynamics equation is not guaranteed to make E to converge to zero. Remember this equation? When you are not doing regularization and this C is there, because the C matrix is not a positive definite matrix or anything, this is going to be your error dynamics. And guess what? This is not, even if you know the exact parameters, in this case you don't, you try to converge to the parameters, even if you knew them perfectly well, still for a variable, a time variable QD, this is not going to guarantee that E is going to go to zero. In this case, we did regularization and it was absolutely working, but if you change them to this, you might be surprised that even your tracking error is not converging to zero. Forget about the parameter estimations. So what would you do if you want your robot to do adaptive control and do track a, uh, does track a, a time varying signal? Then we need to modify this control scheme. So this is adaptive control of robots in joint space for what? Regularization. Okay. It's not for general tracking, and just keep that in mind. Okay, hopefully this video was useful to you. I'm going to share all of these four files with you, and uh, uh, hopefully I get the time to publish another one, which is uh, for general tracking. Thank you so much for your attention. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.